this. Doesn't quite give the full story. In reptile keeping, there are three types of UVB bulb that everybody is familiar with. These being 2.0, 5.0 and 10.0 UVB bulbs. Now, usually when you go to pick out a UVB bulb for a particular reptile, you will see that rating and people on the internet and in books and so on are going to tell you that the particular rating basically tells you what animal it is apt to be used for. So for example, a 2.0 UVB bulb, people will say, can be used with leopard geckos, crested geckos and other crepuscular species. Then they will tell you that a 5.0 UVB bulb can be used for diurnal rainforest species like chameleons. And finally, they will tell you that a 10.0 UVB bulb is good for diurnal desert dwelling reptiles such as bearded dragons. But what if I were to tell you that you can use a 10.0 bulb with a leopard gecko? Now just to get you up to speed before we get into the meat of this video, a 2.0 UVB bulb throws out 2% of its power output as UVB, a 5.0 UVB bulb throws out 5% of its output as UVB, and a 10.0 throws out 10% of its output as UVB. Now in practical terms, what this means is that the higher the rating of the UVB bulb, the more intense the UV is going to be a set distance away from that bulb. Now, as I discussed in my first video about ultraviolet, we measure ultraviolet intensity as a UV index. That's the one that is most useful for us as reptile keepers, and so that is the one that I'm going to be using in all of these videos. Now then, to actually measure a UV index, you need to have a device called a Solometer 6.5, which I've actually got now and I will be referring to throughout the rest of the video. But back to where we came in on this, there is an inherent problem to using the 0.0 number in deciding whether a UVB bulb is appropriate for a given species. As far as we are concerned, UVB, just like any other form of light, exists in little tiny packets of energy called photons. These photons come out as a continuous stream going in all directions from a fluorescent UVB bulb such as a compact bulb or a linear tube. Because the photons are moving away from the UV bulb in all directions, you will notice that as the photons travel away from the bulb, the average distance between them increases. This means that the further away a reptile is from a UV bulb, the smaller the amount of UV that it will receive, or in more quantitative terms, the lower the UV index that it will be exposed to. The important point about this is that if you move a UV bulb further away from your reptile, you will actually decrease the intensity of UV that it will experience. Now, this doesn't have to just be done by moving the bulb away from the reptile. You can also reduce the UV index by putting something in the way of the bulb to block some of those photons out. For example, a mesh screen. Of course, in the opposite sense, you can increase the UV index by putting a reflector over the bulb so that more of those photons do come to interact with your animal. Keeping that in mind, this has got to draw us to the conclusion that in trying to provide a particular UV intensity for any reptile, we've got to pay as much attention to position in the UV bulb as we have to to the 0.0 number on the box. If I take this Reptisum 10.0 and put it 5 feet away from a bearded dragon's enclosure which has got a mesh screen lid, it really is not going to be getting the right UV intensity. So, if you can't just look at a box to decide whether the UVB bulb is the right one for you, how do you decide? Well, this is actually the real strong point of using the UV index. Now very helpfully for you and me, a team of scientists has actually put together a very simple way of deciding how much UV you need to provide to your animal. So what they did was they actually combined data from solar meter readings with knowledge of the behaviour of lots of different species of reptile and put together four different zones of UV exposure called Ferguson zones to which any species can be allocated. All we've got to do is find out which zone our pet belongs to and then decide how we're going to set up the UV system for it accordingly. Now the four Ferguson zones are as follows. 
Zone 1 covers crepuscular species, such as leopard geckos and crested geckos, which would be exposed to a typical UV index of 0 to 0 0.7, with a maximum of 1.4. Zone 2 animals, such as corn snakes and royal pythons, are classed as being occasional baskers, where they would usually receive a UV index of 0 0.7 to 1, and sort of a maximum of about 3. Zone 3 species are those that will readily bask out in the open sun, but they won't really do it at midday, it will sort of be in mid-afternoon and in the morning, so when the sun isn't at its most intense, and there they will be experiencing a usual UVI of 1 to 2.6 and a maximum of 7.4, with exam an example of these species being the bearded dragon. Zone 4 species are the ones that will come out when it's absolutely cracking the flags. These are the midday sun baskers, and the typical UVI that they're going to experience is 2.6 to 3.5, with a maximum of 9.5, which is absolutely massive, and you probably don't want to provide that in captivity. So when you are trying to decide what UV bulb you want for your particular reptile, there's only a couple of things that you've got to take into account of. Firstly, you want to find out what Ferguson zone your species belongs to. So for example, if you've got a crested gecko and you're trying to decide what UVI you want to provide it with, then it's a zone 1 species, so then you know that you want to provide it with UV indices running from 0 to 0 0.7, with perhaps a peak going from 1 to 1.4 at the basking spot. The next thing that you're going to want to find out is how far away the reptile will actually be from the bulb because as I mentioned earlier on in the video, the greater the distance between the animal and the bulb, the lower the UV intensity is going to be. Now in this regard, you always want to make sure that the UVB bulb is going to be above the reptile and not to the side because you don't want to be shining any ultraviolet into their eyes. With this information in hand, what you're then going to have to do is go around on the internet and look for what particular bulb is going to be able to produce the UV index that you want. Now, good companies like Arcadia and Zoomed do make the different statistics about their bulbs freely available via the websites, so finding this out is actually really quite simple. Now, there are actually two other things that you're going to have to take your account of, and these are reflectors and whether you are passing the UV through a mesh or not. Now, in the case of reflectors, usually lots of UV bulbs that you can get nowadays actually do have this information with them because the bulb comes with the fixture as sort of like a package type thing, like the Arcadia Pro T5 bundles. Um, so, getting the information about the UV indices for those is really simple. But with mesh, the amount of UV blockage caused by a mesh is actually dependent on quite a few different things, and therefore the information about it just isn't really out there. Now, for this reason, I never recommend sending UV through a mesh, because unless you have a solar meter 6.5 yourself to test the UVI, you just don't know what your reptile's getting. Now, I know for different species this will have a more of an important effect, so for example like zone 1 species, if you're sending it through a mesh you only need a low intensity UV anyway, so if you just get the next in the next size up bulb, so you know a 5.0 rather than a 2.0, you're probably going to be okay, but if you've got some sun worshipping species like a bearded dragon, it's just a bit risky doing it that way, and so for that reason, it's always best to have the UV bulb on the underside of the mesh rather than sat on the top. And once you take all of those things into account, deciding what bulb you get, it's not actually that difficult, but it'll often give you a completely different answer to what you would do if you just trusted what was on the front of the packet. Now, where I came in on this video is that these packagings a sort of a bit of a misrepresentation of what the bulb's actually going to be useful for. So this 10.0 Reptisun UVB bulb has got a picture of a bearded dragon on the bottom, and I use these with my leopard geckos. Speckles the leopard gecko who lives up here has actually got an Arcadia Pro T5 Shade Dweller unit, but for my two female leopard geckos which are in quarantine, I actually do have two of those Reptisun bulbs. Once you take into account the reflective properties of the mesh, it actually turns out that two of these mini compact UVB bulbs put together produce a UV index that is totally suitable for a zone 1 species like a leopard gecko, and not a zone 3 species like the bearded dragon on the box. So, 
It isn't so much a lie that bulbs like this could be used for diurnal desert dwelling species as it is just a bit misleading because how you use a bulb is just as important as the strength of the bulb itself. So hopefully this video has told you all that you need to know when it comes to picking a UV bulb for your reptile and hopefully I have got across the message that just trusting things, you know, taking it for granted that if there's a beardy on the box it can be used with a beardy or if there's a chameleon on the box it can be used with a chameleon. That sort of methodology ain't really appropriate. <laughs> But anyway, if you did enjoy the video, then do subscribe to the channel, because I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!